idea. If you think about the idea that if we are these great beings, the fact that we could be um, physically assaulting and attacking each other and killing each other in wars and all these different means is, is really gets even more disgusting when you separate it out beyond Darwinism because it's, it's such a primitive nature. It's such a primitive means that it, it's very sad to me to see how people have been so conditioned to exist in that state. And so let's, let's start here, right? You have this question mark at the bottom right in the screen. Right. What is this missing link? Where did we come from? Where did all this start? Well, I want to get a little bit of background and some of these things I've covered, but I want to, I want to bring them up again. And if we look at cuneiform tablets from Mesopotamia, that's where you need to start. That's really where you need to start, but you need to get pure translations. Be very careful. I would, I would essentially stick with, um, the translations of George Smith and Stephanie Daly with some Zechariah Sitchin. But we need to mix, we need to mix um, the sources of information and then object, objectively view them rather than just getting everything from one place. Because if someone was to make mistakes, which some of them have, you essentially would be getting your source of information from only one place. And that's a really dangerous thing to do. So if you get, if you get translations done from different people, from different angles, and they happen to correlate, that's how you know you have truth. At least as much truth as you can get without running into the idea that they could have been manipulated in the past, which I absolutely believe could be possibly true. But we can't know that. So we have to go with the evidence we have, and we have to try to objectively figure out using, using logic to c come up with plausible, plausible con uh, conclusions for these things. And what they, what they essentially say, when you read something like the Atrahasis, one of these cuneiform tablets from Mesopotamia, which, by the way, is one of the only cuneiform tablets that's been translated and carried over by multiple civilizations. So you had you had Sumer, you had Babylon, you had you had several of these uh, in a, up in Assyria, where it was originally was originally found in the Library of Ashurbanipal. You have several of these different cultures that have retranslated this because of the importance of what it contained. Okay. And essentially what the Atrahasis says is this. Long ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago, there were beings that came here, okay? And beings that are far more advanced than we are that can, that can even be, have the ability to have their consciousness possibly separate from themselves and be able to incarnate into somebody or even be able to influence other, other dimensions below them because they're, they're more advanced beings. But they came here and they had... Uh, you could call it a physical workforce or just non-royal members. Because really, look at these families. Look at these, look at these royal families on our planet that are still here. Look at the Rothschilds. Look at the, the queen and all these, these royal families that have these elite bloodlines. The only reason they're like that is because it was, it was simply carried down and handed down from above. These beings have that type of governing structure. They have a royal hierarchy system where they were, and then below them, they have basically other beings that are advanced, but they're not royal status. So they do a lot of the work for these beings. That's what they are. And they're known as the Ajiji. Now, these, these beings, Go ahead. These beings, are they interdimensional beings? Or are they actually from a different planet? They're definitely, they're definitely trans-dimensional, really interdimensional, which means they have the ability to, to move between different dimensions. Now, humanity, everything, everything you see around you in the physical world, that's part of the third dimension, okay? And the third dimension is where matter becomes physical, but there's a lot of other dimensions both above and below it, and because of that, what we see and what we perceive is largely just a small piece of that, okay? And so these beings have the ability to basically master these dimensions. And if you have a being that exists in a lower state of energy that can really only perceive, perceive with its physical eyes the third dimension, but only have the capability to glimpse, I say glimpse, having to do with our consciousness and things like love, which go beyond the third dimension. Now, those are fourth and fifth dimensional attributes. And that's where consciousness resides. So if you want to, if you want to really think about what defines our, our experience here, what, do, what you and I talking right now, what you see 
This is our, this is absolutely a, a, a brilliantly designed biological body where it's, it's like an antenna basically that can, if it's healthy enough, tunes into higher and higher states of consciousness that can, that then have the ability to allow that biological body to reach higher states of energy. That's what we are. And, and that's why these beings and some of these families and some of these, some of these some of those who don't want humans to reach a higher, higher states of energy, they simply just keep them through conditioning, through food, through water, through all these different means. They simply just keep them in their lowest state of energy. And, and that's, if you think about what that is, it's, it's an energy prison because, if, because we don't belong here. We belong in higher states of energy. And that's why it's so disgusting to look at the fact that our, if, once you know a lot of this stuff and then you look back, at thousands of years of war with millions of people that have been brutally murdered and killed. It's just, it's horrible to, to look at how our reality has been shaped. And so what these cuneiform tablets say, the atrahasis is it says that, that these GG were on this planet and there was no other humans here. There was early hominids and they were doing all the work. They were doing all the work for these beings, whether or not it was mining or whether or not it was clearing out channels. In, in these river channels, which is what they specifically says in the Atreides they were doing. The Fertile Crescent, which is where Iraq and Syria and, and all those areas are, is where we see the, mo the, be the best evidence for these advanced civilizations and where they developed. And that's only because these beings went there first. That's where they went to create these civilizations and then start out. They were there before human civilizations. And the reason you know that is because when you read in the Atreides, they talks about how these Ajiji were clearing the lifelines of the land, these rivers, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, because if you don't clear them, because they're running through such um, sandy and, and rocky areas, they get filled with um, sediment and, and dust and all these things, and they become clogged. And so if you don't clear them, they, they turn into these mud pits, and then you can't get any water out of them. And what were they clearing them for? They needed it for water for, for agriculture purposes and, and for feeding themselves. And that's why you see this continued common interest in needing some kind of a labor force to be able to supply them with energy and, and food and all these things. Because you had these beings, again, that are higher beings who are being forced to do manual labor in the third dimension, and they don't want to do it. So eventually, this is where this 3,600 year comes, number comes from. After 3,600 years, these Ajiji beings, they revolted. And they actually took over and they, they demanded relief and they, didn't, they weren't going to do this work anymore. That's not what they were made for, okay? And that's where the story begins. Now, these translations of the Atrahasis, as I mentioned, they're, because there's been a lot of stigma behind Zechariah Sitchin. He got a lot of things right. He got a few things wrong. But George Smith, and, George Smith first, first of all, translated the Atrahasis almost 100 years before, um, before anyone else. And that's, that's important because it represents a, an unpolluted viewpoint. And then Stephanie Daly came later in the 70s and 80s, and she further uh, agreed upon the same translations. Almost no changes were made. And so I want to show some of these, some of what was said, and then we're going to get into some of these really interesting topics like where, what are the origins of, the, of these beings and um, what is the truth of the Nephilim and some, some of these other really interesting topics. And I want to read a, a very short paragraph. Yeah, Go ahead. No, I think that some of the, the reasons that we only hear about Stitchin's work is they just only want one viewpoint out there uh, as opposed to hearing all the ones that like you're speaking of to get a better understanding of what's going on. Exactly. And what do they do? They say Zechariah Stitchin had no professional training and then they discredit him. How are you going to discredit Stephanie Daly? She's one of the top Assyrian experts in the world. She's, she teaches at Oxford University. She's still alive and she's got several books. And, she, and so you have these experts who have translated this. And wait a minute, I thought the Anunnaki was all, oh, the word Anunnaki was made up by Zechariah Sitchin. No, it's not. And you're going to see that as I, when, I, when I read it right now. It's not at all. And that's, that's something we need to really make a point of is that these, these beings were first mentioned. They're called that because that was the first civilization that knew of them. And they called them that because they're actually called the Anuna, A-N-U-N-N-A. They're called the Anuna, and then the, the Sumerians simply called them the Anunnaki 
because it represented them coming down to earth, which is, that's what earth is. Earth, the name of earth is actually K-I, which is really interesting, the, the, word, the word key, right? Um, and so I want to read a, a, a very brief um, quote from tablet one of the Atrahasis, which also echoes the Enuma Elish on tablet six. So that, again, this, if you find correlation, that's, some, that's something you want to pay attention to because that usually leads you more towards the truth. Um, I'm just going to take a paraphrase from, from tablet number one of the Atrahasis, but this is essentially what it says in regards to human creation and, and the jumpstart that occurred to us. It says, Enlil sent for Anu to be brought down to him. Enki was fetched into his presence. Anu, king of the sky, was present. Enki, king of the Absu, was present. All of the great Anunnaki were present. The Ajiji declared, Every single one of us has declared war. We have put a stop to the digging. The load is excessive. It is killing us. Anu made his voice heard and spoke to, his, to the gods, his brothers. What are we complaining of? Their work was indeed too hard. Their trouble too much. Anu made his voice heard and... and uh, sorry. Ea made his voice heard and spoke. Let us create a mortal man so that he may bear the yoke, the work of Enlil. Remember that, the work of Enlil. Let man bear the load of the gods. Nintu made her voice heard and spoke. On the first, seventh, and fifteenth of the month, I shall make a purification by washing. Then I shall, then one god shall be slaughtered. Then a god and a man will be mixed together in clay. Let a god, let a ghost come into existence from the god's flesh. And let the ghost exist, so not to forget the slain god. And I th just think about what that means for a minute. A ghost, consciousness, okay? So that they, cr they could create a being that would be advanced enough that what we think of as, as human consciousness, advanced consciousness, would be able to incarnate into it. And that's something that I think a lot of people, it, it, it gets past people. It's like, what about animals and, and, other, and other biological creatures that don't have, you know, a certain brain capacity and type of energy capacity. I don't think that all, I think all consciousness has a common, a common source, but I think that individual consciousness is what defines us, which is eternal. And that's where the whole karma and reincarnation comes from, because we do have our own unique conscious energy. And I think to allow that conscious energy of, of, that we are that's higher dimensional to be able to come into a biological hominid being you have to have that being have it, be at a certain point Me, what, what does that mean if they wanted to create a being that um was essentially stupid and would just be uh an animal that would follow basic orders they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't have higher consciousness it just wouldn't it wouldn't happen okay it'd be a much more basic type of creature but instead, instead of that, we had a situation where we have this incredible biological design, and I'll get into that more, where we have this ability to, to, to tune into our higher states of consciousness, and that's what we are. We're all these, you know, we're all these cr creator gods here that are in this body that are being tormented and used in our lowest form of energy to just give up all our energy to never, never advance and reach higher levels. It's, it's quite amazing. If you sit back and you look at it from an outside perspective of what we are and what we're doing. And, and that's the whole point behind a movie like the matrix. Um, that's what it's trying to get at the whole time. Um, now with that translation, I just read from the autoresis, a lot of that is hidden in symbols and metaphors. It's one of the things that Thoth talks about is how a lot of this has been cleverly and deliberately hidden. Because what would happen if it wasn't? If all of this was written in plain tongue, simple, right? Instead of saying they mixed something like clay together in a slain god, what if they just talked about how they took a, a, a primitive biological hominid and, and genetically jump-started? Like, they, they don't use those words. Why? Because this information is part of being, un, that's, it's made to be uncovered through, an, through agreements that were made. Made to be uncovered by those who, have the ability to uncover it so that if so if someone wasn't in a certain conscious level and they hadn't reached a certain unbalance or they're not on a certain path in life they can't just find this and immediately understand it all because the reason behind that is everything is protected so that 
you ever heard that that that, that phrase? You know, with with great power comes great responsibility, right? Right. That's the same thing with us is that we are not allowed to reach these higher states of energy. That's been designed that way by these beings, unless we are able to get through certain roadblocks and reach 